Good morning. We will call the August 6, 2024 City Council meeting to order. I ask Council Member Candace Busby to lead our invocation and pledge. If you will, please stand. Let us pray. Father, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity that we as council women and men are able to um, have the privilege just to serve this city. I pray that we would seek you first, that we would work together, and that you would provide us wisdom on doing the city business the way you see fit. I pray that you would just be with all the city employees, the first responders, the police officers, that you would just put a hedge of protection around the city and just allow your will to be done. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, move on to roll call. And Marquisha, see that all council members are present. We have approval of the minutes, July 2nd, city council meeting, July 12th, and July 19th, special call meetings. I think those minutes were emailed out to you all. If no additions or corrections, they will stand approved as read. Um, no proclamations or recognitions today. No public comments. And so move on to first reading. Proposed budget amendment, JPD insurance recovery in the amount of $10,344.32. Motion. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion from council? Council, please vote. Motion passed nine to zero. Item two is consideration of a plan of service, proposed annexation and zoning for an area referred to as Bible number two area, comprising 3.167 acres more or less, located at 1320 block of Ashport Road. Proposed zoning is RS2 PRD, single family residential plan, residential development district. Good morning, Mayor and Council. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you have the materials for this annexation request. Uh, it is a requested annexation. It's a part of the crossings uh, out on Ashport Road. And uh, it has been presented to the Planning Commission, and they are recommending approval of the annexation, the plan of service, and the zoning to you. All right. Any questions from Council? Mm -hmm. So Any moved. Second. Any motion is second. Further discussion? Any feedback from the community? No, it's a, it, it was a part of, always been a part of that development, uh, but because of some county property that's in there, it was left out to kind of create a gap so that we didn't create a hole around it. Uh, but now they've, uh, that section is in the first section that they're going to start developing. So they're still leaving a gap so we don't create a hole, but they just closed it up some. All right, any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed 9 to 0. Item three, consideration of an ordinance to close and abandon the eastern 20-foot strip of Congress Street between Allen Avenue and East King Street. This abandonment request uh, is coming from the Jackson Housing Authority as they redevelop uh, Allington Heights. Uh, there was a portion of right-of-way, it's a pretty wide right-of-way, Congress Street had about 72, but the width was because there was some on-street parking. And as they redevelop the site, they're going to reorient the parking, so they're asking to abandon that 20-foot strip uh, to allow that to fold back into their property and use it for redevelopment. So moved. Second. And motion is second. Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed 9 to 0. Item 4 is consideration of an ordinance to close and abandon a portion of West College Street between North Highland and North Shannon Street. Uh, as you know, we closed College Street some time ago at the intersection at Highland. Uh, now the blacksmith is expanding their operation there. Uh, they've taken in the old accounting office building and going to turn it into a vent center. So to allow them to have a little outside seating area, uh, they want to abandon the portion that's the closest to Highland uh, to allow them to do that. And so once we abandon it, half of it will go to healthy community on one side and the other half will go to them and they're going to work together to, uh, to use that uh, area. Motion. Second. Have a motion and second. Any discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed 9 to 0. Right. Move on to second reading. Item 1 is consideration of a plan of service, proposed annexation and zoning for an area referred to as Stinson area, submitted by Alexander J.M. Wanamaker III, comprising of 30.58 acre, 30 acres, more or less, located at 1984 Highway 70 East. <coughs> proposed zoning is I-2 Light Industrial District. So, so moved. moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed 9 to 0. 
Item two is consideration of an ordinance to rezone property located at the 480 block of Old Humboldt Road from RS1 single family residential to RS2 single family residential district comprising of 18.92 acres more or less. Motion. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed nine to zero. All right. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Stand. Move on to new business. Item one, election of a treasurer. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to nominate Ms. Julie Hope. Second. <laughs> you have a, have a nomination, a quick second, uh, for Council Member Holt. Uh, are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? All right, Council, please vote. <laughs> Motion pass eight to one now. <laughs> Council Member Holt, you're duly elected. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Item two is consideration of a street acceptance request for Lennox Village, section five. <coughs> so moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed nine to zero. Item three is consideration of a street acceptance request for Shiloh Springs, section 12A and 12B. Motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion pass. Motion pass eight to one abstain. All right, Council, I, I meant to say this a couple minutes ago. It, if we can hold our votes until Markeisha calls them, that'll help her call and, and count the vote accurately. Item four is consideration of a resolution for USPS operations. Uh, as explained in pre-agenda meeting, Council, this is a resolution, resolution um, exactly the same to what the county approved last month. Uh, Mayor Massey called and asked would we approve this in solidarity with the county and so I said that I present it to you all and this is just making a resolution requesting the United States Postal Service uh, to move their sorting operations back to Jackson. Uh, we all know the issues we have with the sorting in Memphis and so this is what this resolution is for. Motion. Well, well, what second. Did, well, motion and second. Yeah, we got discussion. What does the Postal Service, what's their rationale that they give in the past as to why the sorting was moved to Memphis in the first place. It was moved to Memphis, if I recall, after the tornado damaged the building. And uh, when they built back, they said it would be more economically efficient for them to have the sorting in Memphis. Okay, that's about the dumbest excuse I've heard in my life. I don't disagree with you. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed nine to zero. Item five is consideration of the contract with the Code for Public Arts Management. <coughs> so so moved. moved. Second. And motion is second. Any discussion? I had a couple questions. $150,000, how much of that salary? None of that. Well, that is a direct salary. That is to manage the public art, and it would pay some artists to do work, but it's not salary to manage it. So how much, are we, how much is going to be set aside to buy art or pay artists? It's a, and maybe yeah, it, um, isn't it? We're not going to spend more than one. Yeah, this is not to exceed amount, right? <clears throat> so we don't know how much of it goes to place. Oh, we'll, got, we'll know in a minute. Good morning. Um, Good I'm here. Good morning. Yeah, introduce yourself, Lizzie sir. Claire Pearson. <laughs> um, I'm here with Lizzie Emmons and Lisa Garner from the Co. That was when the budget was significantly okay. more. Okay, I don't think that we had a proposed budget in the, um, was required in their contract, so. Yep, so the vast majority of the budget will be to go towards artists to install public art here in Jackson on city property. Okay. Is, is, do you expect some more funding from any other source? Not for these projects. These, so this contract is going specifically for um, public art on city property. So should our Jackson Home or the Code do other public art projects that are funded? None of um, this funding will go to any projects off okay. of city yeah, property. It should be for city property. So if a <laughs> right. you know, right. private owner wants to do public art on their property, then they have mm -hmm. to pay for And it. once the um, budget is approved here, it will go before uh, Jackson's Public Art Commission so, mm -hmm. to see the budget break down and approve that. Mm -hmm. So do, let me repeat, I think I heard the vast majority will go towards art itself, mm -hmm. paying for it. Right, a percentage of it will go towards the management, all the day-to-day -day operations of operating a public park. We don't have a number program. on that, though. Not yet, sir. Okay. 
I have a question. No. As far as the artists that was chosen, have we chose all the artists or? No, there's been no artists chosen no. yet. At all? Yes, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, how would that work though? How would the artists be chosen? Who would choose the artists? Uh, the Public Art Commission that already exists will be choosing the artists. So um, the city hired a, a public art consultant mm -hmm. and he laid out a rubric based on um, public feedback of what people wanted to see. Um, so each project will be chosen. There's already some potential site locations laid out, um, all of which are in the Arts District right now um, within the first few years of uh, this program um, because that's what the public wanted to see. Um, so uh, this rubric will then determine each each applicant will be scored by this rubric that the consultant has created. Okay, will the notice go out to the community that artists are uh, yes, requested they'll be, to? There'll be open calls to the public to okay. apply. When you do that, will you send me a special notice of that? Absolutely. Because I have some artists that I want to submit. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Thank and you very much. is Sean Pitts the consultant? He is. Okay. He's from Selma. He is from Was Selma. Was there not someone from Jackson available to do that? No. Okay. Because I had mm -hmm. people ask me that. And okay. I did not yeah. know that answer. Yeah. And we were very impressed with Sean's work uh, across mm -hmm. West Tennessee. He's helped other communities outside yeah. of Selma as well. He was recommended by the Tennessee Arts Commission. Okay. State so arts agency. But we don't have a contract with him right now. No. No. And that he, he, has he, he hadn't proposed one to you? No, he proposed, that was last year. Mm -hmm. divided the, um, well, how much was the salaries last year? Our contract with Sean was for $10,000, but that contract oh, okay. has um, ended. Okay. All right. Any other discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed 9 to 0. All right. Mm -hmm. Item 6. Thank you, ladies. Item six, consideration of committee and board appointments. <coughs> JTA board, reappointment of Donna Hill and David Dallas. So moved. Mo second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed nine to zero. Public Art Commission, appointment of Lewis Giberson, Lyndon No, Rose Newhouse, Savannah Wright, Bill Marble, Marable, and Paige Moore. So moved. Motion. Second. And second. second. Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed nine to zero. Jackson Madison County Historic Zoning Commission, reappointment of Ann Ewing and Jack Wood. So Motion. moved. Second. Motion is second. Any further discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed nine to zero. Item seven is budget amendments less than 10,000. <coughs> Item eight, bless you, consideration of invoices over 10,000. So moved. Second. Motion uh, is second. Any discussion? Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, the architectural workshop for about 121,000, mm -hmm. what's that for right now? That's a contract we had for the uh, initial plans to present for the public safety complex. So we're paying 121,000 for the plans for it? Yeah, or is that for, what exactly is that, that was for? for the, uh, the master planning of the complex, the, uh, the contract you all voted on several months ago. Right, we, yeah. I remember voting on it. So, does that have drawings that we can start construction, or is this just preliminary? Preliminary drawings, yes. And so we'll take that contract, that master plan, and when we present that to our um, federal legislators and our state legislators to help us with the funding to start the actual planning of the process. Okay. On the second page, we've got uh, 45000 for United Way, and I think that's for the empowerment program. What? Mm -hmm. Address that a little bit, please. Uh, you just did. That's for the empowerment program. Well, <laughs> what I'd like to know is what, what we're getting, how many people went through this training and how many were successful? Well, that doesn't have to do with the budget. That's a, pres that's a presentation from the financial empowerment. They're not here to present that today. I'm just wondering if we could get that information. I didn't ask that question. Okay. Could we get the information yeah. on the $45,000? Yeah, so we we redirect with your questions and we'll answer them. Was that, was that direct enough? Yeah. After okay. The third Thank question, you. yes, sir. Okay. Any other discussion? Council, please vote. Motion passed nine to zero. All right, before we adjourn, I want to recognize Councilman J.P. Stovall. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, at the uh, conclusion of our last meeting, it was exchanged between Ms. Wallace and myself, and I just wanted to apologize to her. Anybody who heard that, saw that, was offended by that, uh, certainly was, uh, you know, I think we should keep a certain level of decorum up here when we address one another. And so I just wanted to take a moment to apologize for that. And, um, you know, we don't always get it right, but we certainly try to make it right. So 
I'll yield the floor back to you, Mr. Chairman. All right. No further business. Well, I want to comment on that. Okay. Uh, I, want, I want to commend you for, for that apology. Uh, I've had uh, people send me a copy of it and all those kinds of things, and I, I commend you for that. Uh, and I would also take this time to say that on this council, we are members of the city of Jackson. Uh, we're, we shouldn't come to this body as a Republican or as a Democrat, but as a citizen of Jackson, trying to do best, the best thing that we can do for the citizens of Jackson. That's who we are. We, so we shouldn't let any type of political uh, persuasion come between us working together for the good of the citizens of this city. And I would hope that we would always keep that in mind as we deliberate in doing our duty for the citizens. So again, I commend you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. No further business coming before the council. Meetings adjourned. Vote.